This is National 5 Design and Manufacture and in this lesson we're going to look at turning. We'll look at turning, how you turn cylindrical shapes in woods and metal. We'll cover the tools involved and the various steps we have to go through to set up so that we can turn accurately and safely. Let's get started. We'll begin by looking at wood turning. Turning wood is done on a lathe and it's used to make objects that are cylindrical, such as banisters, uh, rails, table legs, bowls, baseball bats, chess pieces. The wood is shaped by chisels and an excellent finish can be achieved. A really superb finish. It's also quite safe, wood turning, because uh, it's the material that spins and not the sharp tool. So when we're turning something on a lathe, it's the wood that's actually spinning around and this tool, the sharp bit, is actually staying stationary. At the end of turning, we can apply a finish, such as wax, onto the uh, finished material and that really enhances the quality of the finish as well. There's a very strict process we're going through when we prepare a wooden blank for turning. We call it a blank because it tends to be a kind of square sectioned batten of wood. The first step is we would use a steel rule and a pencil to find the centre of the ends of our batten by drawing an X between corners. Next we would define the size of our turn cylinder but by using a compass to draw a circle at the end of the blank. Third step then we would then take a smoothing plane or a jack plane and a bench vise and we would turn our square blank into a shape which was an octagon, eight sided shape. And the reason why we do that is just because it spins a little bit more safely inside the lathe. Step four, on one of the ends we would cut cross grooves using a tin saw probably about five millimetres or so deep and that's so that it fits into the forked centre uh, of the lathe. And here is the lathe ready for turning. The lathe, you can see the material in brown sandwiched between the drive centre and the tapered centre. The other parts of the lathe include the tool rest which we lay or we rest the tools upon, the various locking handles, the tailstock and the beds that the whole thing sits on. There are six steps to setting up the lathe for turning. You would mark out the dead areas at either end of the material with pencil. When you put a blank into a lathe, you don't want to be turning the very ends of the blank because it's too close to the spinning metal of the machine tool. So we tend to set those as dead areas and don't go near them with a chisel. We would secure the material in the lathe between the two centres. We would set the vertical height of the tool rest to be just below the centre line. Then we would set the position of the tool rest so that the spinning wood doesn't hit it and we would turn the lathe over by hand just to make sure that no part of the wood actually fouls or connects with the tool rest. We would set the correct speed for the wood being cut and finally we would put on all this correct safety gear and observe the best safety practices. Eye protection, apron, knowing where the emergency stop button is and also having a general look over the lathe to make sure that nothing is broken about it, no parts are loose or there's nothing otherwise a bit suspicious about the machine. When we come to actually turn on a lathe, we tend to use chisels. These are not like your ordinary workshop chisels. These tend to be big double-handed things. There's four of them that we like to turn our attention to. There are gouges. Uh, these are bowl-shaped. If you look at the end of them, they're, they're curved like a bowl. And they're for rough cutting. So we would tend to reach for a gouge, first of all, to turn that octagonal blank into something approximating a cylinder. I've not got these in the correct order. After a gouge, we would tend to use a scraper. Then scrapers come in either with curved ends or square ends, but a scraper is for removing waste material or wood. Um, you get a better quality of finish than the gouge, and it can do concave faces as well. The scraper is a general purpose uh, kind of shaping tool. We've got a skew in there as well, which has got a kind of angled front, comes to a, a kind of point. Uh, very accurate cutting and shaping because uh, you can get that point right into grooves and things like that. We can cut grooves and all manner of decorative features with a skew. And the parting off tool is for both cutting notches and for separating the wood from the lathe towards the end of the process if that's required. 
Let's now turn our attention to metal turning, which is almost exactly the same as wood turning, in that we've got a spinning piece of material and a cutting tool. But metal tends to be a little tougher, a little harder to cut, so we don't tend to hold the cutting tools by hand. In this case, they tend to be held inside a tool post just to make things nice and accurate and safe. So metal, we use metal turning to make cylindrical shapes out of metal. The, t the um, machine in question is called a centre lathe. And the process of metal turning is incredibly accurate and gives an excellent surface finish. You can see in the little animation there how shiny the surface quality of the metal is. The cutting tools, unlike chisels, are mechanically controlled. They're very, very hard and they're very sharp. And we know that so long as we've got metal rubbing against metal, we're going to generate high temperatures. So these tools tend to be cooled with a kind of coolant liquid which sprays and squirts all over it. There are four operations that we're interested in at Design and Manufacture at National 5 level. Um, with a standard cutting tool, we can do parallel and step turning which is the little blue diagram there. Um, also with a standard cutting tool, we can do taper turning, where we can turn kind of conical shapes or part cones or chamfers and things like that into a metal blank. We can attach the centre drill tool and we can drill. And we can cut patterns on the metal by using something called a knurling tool to create what's called knurling uh, patterns. If you've ever heard, held a a dart and thrown at a dartboard, that little grippy metal pattern is the example of knurling. The setup for turning on the centre lathe is as follows. Number one, you would set the appropriate tool into the tool post. You could either have the standard cutting tool, you could have a centre drill, or you could have a knurling tool. You would fix the material into the three-jaw chuck of the centre lathe. You then position the tool at the correct height usually at the centre line of the material and then you would move the tool in the direction to achieve the cut and we said earlier on the tool is mechanically controlled so in effect what you're doing is you're spinning little wheels and adjusting little buttons and levers in order to do the cutting at this, at this um, point remember to your safety here remember that your coolant must be on and that you must be wearing appropriate safety gear guards must be down in the machine uh, face masks, eye goggles, aprons knowing the location of the emergency stop button and also inspecting the machine for any damage before using it. I'm going to conclude by inviting you to visit YouTube and watching a useful little video. It's quite long, but at various stages in the video you can see all the different operations for metal turning. You can see uh, parallel turning, step turning, taper turning and also centre drilling as well. It's really worth checking out. And that concludes the video on turning for National 5 Design and Manufacture. We've covered wood turning, metal turning, the tools and the setup procedures of each.